Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the GBYWN Australia podcast, here for part three with my interview with the suburban nightmare Dark Ice and Ice, where we left off, we were in the middle of Dark Ice's fight night. Yep. So I believe the next match for Dark Ice's fight night, you had called out Kilowatt Chaos. And unfortunately, Chaos did not make the show. <laughs> yep. Um, the rules, obviously, as applied to Dark Ice's fight night, I stated from the get go if you don't answer my challenge, I'll go back there and drag you out myself. Um, so at this point, we'd already known that um, Chaos wasn't coming to the show, and um, we'd never planned for Dark Ice to go backstage and drag somebody out. Um, so that, that was going to work perfectly for us. Dark Ice can actually stand by his word and go back there and uh, like drag someone out. Yep. So I've come out, i said, one more match, Chaos. I, I'm not fully satisfied with everything. Yep. And his music plays. Everyone's like, oh, is Chaos actually here? Like they got the crowd going. Yep. Um, Chaos's music stops and everyone's just like, ah. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, okay. And as soon as I got back on the microphone, I was like, hey, if you're not coming out here, then Chaos, I'm coming back there to find you. And that, that got everyone going again. I've walked backstage in that segment and um, a few matches go past. Um, and then just out of random, cameras are rolling. <laughs> Dark Ice's music hits once again. Um, and there I am, I'm coming out the stage and I've got Steel Kemsley. Poor little Steel Kemsley. Poor Steel Kemsley under my arm. And I've just said, you know, if Chaos isn't here, if I can't find Chaos, I said, this is the next best thing. Obviously, far from it, but, <laughs> you know, I found Steel and I'm dragging him out. And He's, delivered two choke slams. Yeah, put him in the ring, hit two choke slams. Pinned him one, two, three. You know, just another one <laughs> to my another, record. <laughs> another one in the win, the win column for Dark Ice. Pretty a relatively easy one that day. So after this, I thought, well, I've got to get this match happening before it's all said and done. Because I didn't know how much longer Zibby was going to be around. Yep. Um, so I thought, well, it never happened in ICWS. Got to do Clint Marshall versus Dark Ice <laughs> one-on-one. So what did you think about that one? Loved it. <laughs> Um, I'd always said to you and others and Zibby himself that we have to have a match one day Um, because before ICWS, um, before Zibby actually debuted, I was the assistant coach on his baseball team. Ah. Um, So I I knew Zibby before he came into ICWS uh, because of baseball. Um, So it was cool to see him rock up. (laughs) A bit of a surprise. and Holy shit. And surprise everyone else, like all his mates that were there, um, surprise them by, by knowing him. They're like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. You actually know someone else? Like, <laughs> So that was, that, um, to be able to actually have that match, um, <laughs> just great, man. Like, fucking waited so long for it and it finally happened. It finally happened. I was just so glad that we could line it up and, and get that one done. Just like the Del Cano match, good to get that one done. Yeah. Um, so Dark Ice's fight night takes a uh, turn and a turn that no one really expects <laughs> so before we get to the big showdown at Resolution 3 there's a little bit of a segment at one of our shows during one of the Dark Ice's fight night segments where you attacked someone known in the wrestling community here as Superfan <laughs> yep um, so yeah I've come out um, I think it was after the uh, one of my fight nights. I think it might have been after Zibby. Um, I've gone. I've had super fan yelling abuse at me. Um, I've, I've got a steel chair in my hand. Um, well, actually, no, I didn't at this point. I was, I was standing there. I was like, "Hey, you, you're NC Viper's friend, aren't you?" And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I know you." And he's like, okay. Yeah, it was more abuse. I'm just like, um, for a statement from me to you, Viper, bang! 
punch Chopper right in the fucking chin and, um, and just beat him down against this block and he's, he's sitting there, he's defenceless while I'm recklessly laying, bit, into laying into him on the floor. And then I've run off, I've grabbed a steel chair and just uh, cracked his head between the steel chair and the concrete blocks. Just laid him out. Now, this match with you and Viper was set up quite some time previously. <laughs> He'd been saying on... Because I was on the Smash crew on Noongar Radio on Saturday mornings. Yeah. We talk about sports and wrestling, and sometimes WCWA would come up, and he would always mention he wanted to have a fight against Dark Ice. Yeah. Um, well, you probably wouldn't know this, um, but prior to that, uh, three years prior to the Noongar radio stint, um, we'd already wanted to have a match. Right. Um, so this match was literally four years in the making, finally. Um, during my ICWS run, you know, um, went to shows a lot and began a bond uh, with NC Viper um, at all these pro shows and things like that. Yeah. And we generally just become mates uh, more than anything and got involved in his documentaries that he was doing, uh, attended his wrestling school he tried to kick off that unfortunately was unsuccessful. Yeah. Um, and yeah, finally come down to it. He goes, I'm available this day, which is your big show. And I said, sweet, um, I'm up for it. So for those, you know, maybe there's some GBYWN people from the States and the UK maybe listening to this. NC Viper is a local professional wrestler. He's an Aboriginal bloke. Uh, it is one of a kind. There's no, I don't know of any other. Um, well, there, there are some people with Aboriginal blood in them, I believe. Yeah. But NC Vipers, you know, the Aboriginal original. Yeah, and, and he's 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 well known throughout the circuit here in Perth. Yeah, you got one of the best professional reputations uh, out of any of the guys there. Yeah, and um, you know, I've become quite good friends with Neil over the past previous months and. The actual, the initial plan was for you to face Three Dog at Resolution for the World Hardcore Championship, but plans changed with Three Dog missing a few shows and ended up putting that title on Antilochus. <laughs> so I needed to come up with a new plan for Dark Ice for Resolution, and lo and behold, NC Viper said he was free, he was keen, and <laughs> oh my god, we've got a professional wrestler keen to appear on WZWA. Excluding yourself, obviously. Yes. But dedicated professional a professional that never done backyard wrestling yeah and all of a sudden out of left field we've got nc viper versus dark ice for Let resolution three i know a lot of behind the scenes things were going on with viper a lot of people were telling him not to do it don't do yeah. it but viper didn't care he didn't he put his reputation on the line to face you yeah. Which is a huge <laughs> show of respect, I believe, from him to you. Yep, and I really appreciate that. And uh, the match itself, I mean, gee, it speaks for itself. <laughs> yeah, it was um, uh, from first contact to the last pinfall was about uh, seven and a half minutes. Um, I think maybe seven minutes tops. Um, excuse me. Um yeah, we'd set it up, we'd planned it, everything that we did plan went perfectly. Um, you know, he's come out, I've come out to the ring, I've challenged him, I've said, get your ass out here, there's nothing more I want right now than to punch you square in the nose, so get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, out he comes to his fucking, um, oh, that fucking music that he came out to. Yeah. <laughs> um, gets a loud pop from the crowd. Holy shit chants. Holy chance, shit geez. chants. Yep. Um, and he said to me before, he goes, man, I suck on the microphone, dude. Like, he, he asked me what to say. I said, bro, just ramble, make some bullshit up about I thought he me. did a good job. Yeah. And he goes, oh, all right. And I was like, yeah, man, just, just say whatever. It's he like, got to the point quick, and yep. then he was going to the crowd for a beer, and then... <laughs> yeah, he's... Um, just to see you go. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not fighting you here today, Ice. Yeah. I'm... Um, I'll fight you on my terms, and today's not the day. I just want to sit in the crowd and have a beer with the boys. Yeah. So off he walks to claim a beer, <clears throat> then out of nowhere into the shot. <laughs> Dark Ice is charged all the way from the ring, clubbed the shit out of him in the back, you yeah. know. 
I'm clubbing him with these hardest blows I've ever hit anyone with. And that's... I'm just thinking, oh my god, the <laughs> balls on ice, even though it's all planned, <laughs> the balls on you to go to that big dude and nail him in the back with a hell of a hard <laughs> clubbing shot. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. And yeah, just went from there. We just The, um, the match itself was a, a singles match with rules, so at this point it, the match hasn't officially started. Yeah. Um, and we're brawling on the outside. He's suplexed me on the ramp. Um, no, he body slammed me on the ramp. Yeah. Uh, which got a, everything we did got a huge pop everything and a huge was just reaction. Perfect man, from like, the crowd, and we're doing all this stuff. Um, I've suplexed him on the ramp and dragged him over. Gave him a solid spike DDT. Yeah. On the ground, and I've moved myself up to the top of the concrete blocks. Moonsault or side side flipped off the blocks, and he's rolled under, and I've just hit the ground. And again, he's got the upper hands. About yeah. my favourite point is when you've got the the handful of kendo sticks, oh. and he hit, he hit him <laughs> twice, and he dares you to hit him square in yeah, the head. Yeah, yeah. Come on, mate. You want to hit me properly? Hit me in the face, pointing to his forehead. And I was like, all right, and just with one of my hardest shots. You just, just nailed him. Just nailed him between the eyes. Everyone was going <laughs> crazy, The crowd's just shitting themselves. They're fucking lapping it up great. And um, finally, finally the action spills back in the ring. He, he gets the advantage. He throws me into the ring. I've stood up, and as soon as he's climbed into the ring, the, the bell's rung, and straight away I've got him by the throat with my right hand, yep. hoisted him straight up, Choke slam to the mat. Choke Everyone's slam. like, oh. Yeah. And as I went to cover, you know, the referee, one, boom, kicked out kicked at out. one. No one's ever done and that before. No one's done that to Dark Ice's choke slam before. Um, it kicked, it kicked out at one. The crowd was lapping it up. They're fucking loving it. I was like, no way, no way. So I've picked him up. I've gone for an um, inverted DDT which he's then rotated and turned me around and hit me with the inverted DDT. Yeah. Um, at this point, I'm just, I'm just getting myself up in the corner, and um, he's, he's at the opposite end of the ring, um, perched, perched on one foot with his uh, other foot um, on his knee. Yeah. In, in what looks like a... which was a Aboriginal symbol um, of, of the spear... Yeah, um, which is the traditional hunting uh, for Aboriginals uh, back in their origin. Yeah, um, and yeah, as soon as I've turned around, he's made the gesture of throwing the spear at me and just run at me and hit me with the biggest spear I've ever taken oh, in my man. life. Oh man, the pop of that spear got <laughs> the way you landed it, so good. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, officially, fifty-five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> NC Viper has beaten Dark Ice in um yeah what still may end up being match of the year yeah it was it was definitely um one of the biggest shows so one of the biggest matches we've ever had if not the biggest match we've got a pro wrestler putting his rep on the line to yeah face and, you. and you know um my hair was on the line yes your hair was on the line if he <laughs> lost my, he had to wear pat- a dress patented mullet Mm-hmm. And yeah, he had to sport a dress if he lost. Yep. Um, out in public as well. And of course he's. Um, and of course, yeah. As soon as the match was over, he's called for the scissors. And when I, when the match is over, I realised we don't have any scissors, so I've got to sprint inside, <laughs> ask Jack's dad for a pair of scissors, run back out, give them to Chopper. Yep. Or well, Pimp Daddy Chopper, but you know maybe we won't talk about that. No. Um, but <laughs> he cuts off your hair. The reaction. The reaction was insane from everybody because um, everyone knew Dark Ice was synonymous with the mullet. Um, so to have someone actually chop it off in the middle of the ring um, was just a shock for everybody when they actually went through with it. Yeah. Um, nobody thought I'd actually go through with it, but you know what? I did that again, did a little bit of psoriasis while I was coming back, so I needed a little bit of sun exposure on my head. So I, I took the mullet off, um, incorporated into the match. Yeah. And, um, yeah, probably probably the, the best moment was after that match as he walked out, turned around to face the camera, and in Bret Hart style, 
signed off on the camera, WZWA, with yeah. a thumbs up, and yeah. just got everyone lapping it up. It yeah, was, it was such a proud moment. Yeah, it was it was moment of my career, really. Yeah, just to have him do it, so much respect to him. I, I'm I'm so so happy that we got to have that happen because. Yeah. Jesus Christ, there's no other pro that out there that's going to be willing to put their rep on the line the way that he did. And, um, you know, he wants to come back. He's been wanting yeah. to come back. And, you know, do you want to have a rematch with NC Viper? Yeah, the, more than anything, man. Um, I got the loss this time, so I want to redeem myself. I want to prove that I can be up there. I, I'm worthy. Um, you know, I have done the pro training I've done everything that I need to to get where I am now. Um, and if I can overcome a pro, then that'd be sweet. Um, so, you know, hopefully. I've heard it here first, guys. Dark Ice wants that rematch with NC Viper at some point. It, it, it has to happen. It has to. But. So um, after this match, um, there was going to be an ensuing storyline where you're doing everything you can to get yourself a rematch with NC Viper, but you've decided you want to hang up the boots uh, for the time being. Yeah. Um, and we lead this into a feud with Kilowatt Chaos. Yeah. So what made you make this, make this decision to um, take some time away from wrestling? I just I just wanted to get myself um, for my own benefits into better physical um, condition. I felt um, that I could do so much more if I was a bit more lean, and if I could throw myself around more than I already am. Um, I felt there was so much more I could offer um, as a fitter person. So my idea was to just take six months off and make my debut when I felt comfortable. Um, so yeah, that, that was set in stone that Dark Ice was going to um, hang up the boots for a short period again. Yep. This time for my own, not, it was for my well-being last time, but like this was just um, a decision I made that I wasn't forced into. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the plan. And um, the feud with Chaos again, I said every time I'm having my last match, <laughs> um, I want it to be against Chaos. Yeah. So, yeah, that that's what, how that came about. So we got to that last match with Chaos. We got the match before, the show before. There was, that's right, there was the show, um, the hard times. Uh, I mean, Chaos will tell you as well, it's probably not worth mentioning, because the match... It just it just wasn't a chaos versus ice spectacle. It just I don't know what went what went wrong. I think, like, chaos was, chaos was a bit sore from work. He was he was plus drained. he hadn't wrestled since like December or yeah, November. Yeah, a little bit of time off, and then I'd already wrestled that day as well. Yeah. Um. So it was like uh, we thought we could do it, but turns out in the end we weren't up to it. Um. Blade Shaw was really keen to see ice versus chaos. And yeah. Yeah, I apologised to him afterwards. I said, "I'm sorry, man, that we couldn't, <coughs> we couldn't like give you the spectacle you wanted." Yeah, and like we just went up to it. I'm sorry, man. And he's like, "Bro, it's all right. Like these things happen. Don't worry about it, man." <coughs> so um, after this, uh, this match with Chaos, which you weren't too happy with, we got the rematch at False Finish. 2015. Yep, both um, both fresh outs for this one now, and we'd yeah. actually planned yeah. this one ahead of time. Yeah. So um, during the match, something doesn't go as <laughs> to plan. <laughs> yeah, so we're having this awesome match, getting pops from everybody. Um, Blade was lapping it up as well. I was happy happy he got to see the classic mm -hmm. um, that me and Chaos are capable of. We lived up to what we should have done. And the finish of the match was a, um, I was going to moonsault off the top rope, yep. um, land flat on my stomach and walk straight into um, the flatliner, Chaos's, Chaos Theory finishing yep. move. But um, that didn't happen. I ascended the top rope, I looked back, Chaos was ready. I've gone for the moon salt, but being my last match, um, knowing my last match for a while, the adrenaline was just super high. It was the end of the match. 
Um, and I've, as I've gone for that moon sword, I knew straight away that I'd fucked it. Um, I was instantly over rotating. Um, and yeah, when it, when I landed, um, my feet landed first. Um, my left ankle was rolled, and all the force from my 120 kilogram frame pushed down on a rolled ankle, and uh, yeah, it just fractured fractured my fibula right there and then. And I just I just could not get up um, to walk into that to the flatliner. So yeah. Um, I laid laid down and just called for chaos to um, pin me, and the ref he counted two, and then because he he knew what the finish was, yeah. so he counted two, and I was I just yelled out, I just said, "Fucking pin me, just fucking pin me," and they're like, "Oh shit, shit!" So yeah. chaos has jumped back on me, and the refs counted three, um, and yeah, that was. <laughs> forced time off <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be like last time but you know it ended up that ended way up, but in, yeah it seems like every time you, you're going to have time off it's going to be forced in some way or another yeah um, so I mean we had the match um, previous to this we had a bit of a problem with WCWA there was some issues going on yep. possibly losing the venue um, yeah. so I just wanted to maybe cover that a little bit and see what your thoughts were on the situation with um, with Jack and the uh, the arena and possibly moving to Baldivis yeah but no real thoughts on it um, I was a bit upset hearing that but you know at the same time ICW, ICWS was getting ready to rev up again um, so, the fact that we were losing WZWA was hard for me, um, especially knowing like Jack. Jack had a few issues here and there. Uh, felt sorry for the guy, and um, you know, what can you do? It's not. It's, it's not. It was pretty much out it's of not our. Hands. It's not our property in the end. You yeah. know, it's his old boy paid for the ring. Yeah. It's at his house. Yeah. And we all had to sit back. We all had to respect um, Jack's privacy and Jack's issues and his dad's issues as well. Yeah. Um, so we, all, we, most of us kept quiet. But a lot of a lot of the boys did voice their opinion, which didn't help the matter in the end. Like uh, towards the end. Um, but yeah, thank fuck. You know, situations Thankfully. changed. I mean, we almost had this and, <laughs> important thing in all of our lives taken away from us. Yeah. And to just to feel like that was going to be happening was really upsetting for all of us. Yeah. But, hey, what a relief. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, just can't... Couldn't explain the feeling when I was able to get back in that ring knowing it was going to hang around yeah. for longer. And, yeah. Oh, amazing. <clears throat> so we should all really thank ourselves lucky that we still get to do what we love to do. Yes. And um, so far, this year has been great. we got Frostbite coming up on Saturday on July 4th, 2015. Yes. Um, of course, <laughs> Dark Ice will not be competing. You've got the. Uh, you're still. Oh, that's bullshit, man! I want my money mend. back. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the mend, but um, should be a good show. And um, well, that comes to the end of, of Dark Ice's WZWA career. We've got a Q and A coming up. Yep. But um, <coughs> you know, looking back, you know, what's your proudest moment? <sighs> proudest moment, man. Probably the respect that everyone showed in 2013 um, before my encounter with Mykonos. Um, I came out to the ring. It had been one week um, since Kilowatt Chaos had actually lost his mother to cancer. Um, no, there, it was hard for me to... Um, to go out there, it was tough enough on Chaos um, to make the show, but he, he pulled through, he, he come anyway, regardless of his emotions. Um, you know, I was in tears when I was on the microphone, that's uh, why I kept my mask on the whole time, and I just said, you know, um, I know no one's a fan of me because I'm a bad guy, but, you know, I've got something to say, I need you to listen and there were a couple of guys who knew what I was doing, Chaos not being one of them, did not have a clue what I was doing, um, so they all managed to quiet the crowd down so I could talk. 
you know, it was just, you know, a week ago, kill chaos, lost his mother to cancer, um, sad moment, um, and could we please have a minute's silence, uh, for his mother, and, you know, you could hear a pin drop on the outside that mm-hmm. night, and that's probably one of my favourite moments ever. Just that show um, of respect just for that, our friend. Yes. And he's, that, he's had a tough run, but he, hey, you got to look at him now and be so proud of where he's at now oh, in his yeah, life. Sure, and, man. He's just, he's excelled to where everyone would hope he'd be at this point. You know, his life's on track. Um, he, he, he's got everything going for him at the moment, and he's got the support of all his mates as well still. And so. he's got himself a fine woman. <laughs> Lovely girl she is, <laughs> Yeah, she's yes. pretty cool. Yes. Um, all right, so we've got that. All the WCWA out the way. Now we're going to get on to the Q&A with the boys. Um, right. I might have to check back on the thread during this just to see if there's been any more added. All right. Michael Barrett... The little fucking dickhead. Oh, that Jewish guy. Yep, he's asked the first question, of course. He's just so (laughs) self-involved. What's your favourite thing about Mike Del Cano? Mm. Really? Yeah, really. Um, I don't... Hmm, favourite thing... I've never really sat back and picked a favourite thing about anybody, so... Give me a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Dark Eyes just farted. <laughs> yeah. Um. Fuck. Man, it's, it's just difficult. <laughs> well, well, let, let me. I let think, me... think probably his um his attitude towards coming back, um from from tough situations, um like Mike Delcano at the moment just had surgery and. Um, his attitude towards it was has just been positive, you know. Um, going into matches, he either didn't want to wrestle, or was unsure about. He was always positive. Um, yeah, like his overall attitude is just one of my favourite in the yard. Um, you know, as I said before, he comes up to me. He's the first to shake my hands. Um, always got a, sm- a smile on his face when he sees me. Um, yeah, he's just a just a top quality bloke. Yeah. Um, it just, just just puts a positive vibe. He's always the first to start the fun chance as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it just just creates a good vibe for everybody. It's probably my favorite quality. Of yeah, you got to admit, Mike's really good in the crowd. He's always um, enthusiastic. Always yes, they're always enthusiastic, always involved, and um, you know, he's the leader. I didn't follow the leader. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he's just a great bloke. Yep. Well, the next question was. Um, Asked by this fucking retard who didn't realise that the Q and A was for you, he actually asked me a question. Oh, um, well, let's turn the microphone Nick Ariel. Off. <laughs> he asked me. Sure, it was a troll. He asked me main stars on the roster getting to the age where they'll start dropping off because of other commitments and interests. Do you have a plan for bringing in new younger talent, or are you just seeing what happens? Well, Nick, this one's for me, obviously. Um, We've we've we're fine, you know. Before we had a roster of twenty seven, twenty eight plus people. <laughs> now we've lost a bunch of them. Now the cards are only down to like nine, sometimes ten matches. Only. So, for for me, that is a blessing, <laughs> to have only nine matches on a card. We don't need any new talent. We might I might be thinking of getting in. Um, Sadistic Ooh. Vincent Graves from the ICWS. Ooh. He might pop in for a cup of coffee or so. See what happens there. But overall, we don't need any new guys. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to get people like Three Dog there. Um, he might drop off soon. Who knows? Some people are on the edge of possibly retiring. Um, I know Dan Zeppelin might be winding down now, but. We've still got enough guys, I feel, and if the time comes to it, I know Deacon and Kyle have got some friends down there in Warmbro that are keen to wrestle. I know we've possibly got Vincent Graves. I'm still trying to get Wicked Nick James in. Um, but, you know, Alex Stone, Brian Lowe, they'll all be popping in every now and then to wrestle. Um, as we know, Brian Lowe will be at the Commissioner's Cup on the 17th of July, so that's pretty positive. I know Alex is keen to wrestle another match soon. And also be at Resolution 4 next year. So, got that to look forward to. 
Um, <clears throat> Michael Barrett with the next question. Again? Yeah. Oh, he just wants to know. He's <laughs> asked, uh, did you ever consider any other gimmick outside of the big, scary, hardcore cane thing? Undertaker thing, I'm sorry, but I was going for an Undertaker. <laughs> it, just because he puts on a mask, he takes it off. Yeah, Kane never took his fucking mask off for like pff, eight years. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. Oof. If anything, fucking hell, dude. <laughs> that's that's my girlfriend's cooking, I think. That might be uh, yeah, it's, it's contributing to your flatulence. <laughs> the only person who really ripped off Kane is Diffuser. Yeah. I don't think Dark Ice is anything like Kane. Dark Ice is Dark Ice. Yeah. That's well, you. That's you with the volume turned up a bit. Yeah. And you just happen to wear a hockey mask when you come out because you like ice hockey and you like Jason Voorhees. That's it. Well, my original gimmick, man, uh, Michael, my original gimmick was just to be, um, it was, I wanted to be a face. It turns out my entire career I've been a heel. <laughs> you have, and that's um, ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, I'd, I'd never plan to wear the big boots. I never plan to wear the chain link clothes or anything like that. Um, my original gimmick was, if I think about it, was really to be a charismatic character like yourself, just a someone who can go out there and just do crazy shit. Um, just a minute, Ice. You want to be Yolo Nugget. <laughs> Yolo Nugget. Fuck. <laughs> we'll get but to you. I, I think I think the original plan was to be a sick Nick Mondo style wrestler. Gotcha. With a mixture of hardcore and crazy shit um, going on. Kind of like a big man version of Nick Mondo. Yeah. Yes. Pretty much. So a Zandig of short of sorts. Yep. <laughs> Okay, and uh, Barrett also asks, uh, "What would you say is your favourite non-hardcore match of all time?" I know he's, I know he's, he's nudging you to to get himself over here, the little dickhead. <laughs> he's hoping that you're going to say him. Dark Ice vs NC Viper. Ah, oh, you got roasted, you got dickhead. Roasted, mate. Fuck roasted. you. Fuck you, you little roasted faggot, son of a Jew bitch, boy. motherfucker, hey dick sucking there, little cock Jew face. Boy. Yeah, you like that, bitch? Do you like that? Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of actually going out there and not having um, any hardcore spots at all, um, yeah, I dare say it. It would have to be Mike Del Cano on Backyard TV. Gotcha. You get a point there, Mike, Mickey boy. You get one. Well, I prefer the Mykonos match, but hey, we're all entitled to our opinion. Well, that's it, but you know, the... Um, just the flow of the match with Mike. It was um, good. I will give him credit for I, that. Like, tell you what, like, I hadn't, I wasn't as pumped for the match with Mykonos as I was the match with Del Cano. So that just adds that extra little bit. Yeah. Okay. Daniel Johnston, he chimes in. As we know, he usually chimes in with a million questions. That's all right. I like his questions generally. Yeah. Uh, he asks, "Do you feel that using a former big name wrestler in the?" Gr uh, general manager role is better than using a non-wrestler in the role and if so why <laughs> um well based on what we know um if you had brought someone in that nobody knew as a general manager um nobody i don't feel anyone would have taken it seriously i don't think we know anyone no i mean like maybe it, nem He's the only one who could be but, a non- but then again, but he used to be a wrestler, yeah. so that doesn't count. Um, someone like uh, his old boy Kev. <laughs> you brought your old boy, and everyone would have just had much love and respect. And, you know, <laughs> you just get a fuck you every now and then. Um, but I, I do feel having a wrestling character, someone known, to fill the general manager position, especially someone with the reputation of Dark Ice, um, who is quite the controlling type, um, is. Definitely much better than a. Um, no one can feel Chris Zeppelin's non wrestler. No, they can't. Like, obviously, Chris Zeppelin, um, from the get go, was the general manager, so his character was already solidified. Um, and as we just said before, there was there could, couldn't have been anybody to fill the role um, that was a non wrestler because, again nobody really would have cared unless they knew the guy. Um, so I do think having a wrestler there benefits 
um, that position because, you know, everyone will pay attention um, and everyone will be happy to uh, allow the general manager into the storyline and work with him to create this and that. And of I course. Think, I think that's, that is the best option and you have done well and you picked the right guy. Yeah. <laughs> Just I think the only thing that needs to be rem- remembered is that dark ice is dark ice. So he yeah. may be wearing a suit, he may be GM, but you've got to still make him be a badass. Yeah. Okay. Um, DJ also Ooh. asks... Uh, you've worked with virtually everyone at least once. Who are some people you'd love to wrestle again, and who haven't you wrestled before that you'd like to wrestle? I've never wrestled Tim Justice. Would like to wrestle Tim Justice. If you're listening, Tim, he wants to see it. Um, I want another round with you, DJ. That would be insane. Um, I want another round with Aston Crude. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've only touched the surface of what we could do together. I'm pretty sure we have. And yeah. um, I, I think I can go a lot further in a match with Mike Del Cano again. I would love another uh, a fourth instalment with Mickey. That'd be fucking incredible. Yep. Um, another round with NC Viper. Another round with NC Viper. You heard it here first, folks. And... Um, yeah, the one everybody obviously knows that I want to round with. Diffuser. I want to see it. I will... Diffuser, I know you're not listening, but... <laughs> <laughs> but listen here. But if you're listening, <laughs> I will pay you $200 to wrestle Dark Ice. Oh. I'll pay you $200. And if you want more, <laughs> I can't do that. But 200 is pretty <coughs> fair to go out there and pretend to fight someone. And then the first got... person I'll ever pay to wrestle... <laughs> And um, just continue on that point, DJ. Um, I'd also, um, if if we can fit it in down the track, if commitments are there as well, you know, the XCW guys, uh, Nick and John. I know I've I had the match at Clash the Triads. Oh, but, I totally forgot to mention that. Um, one-on-one, as far as one-on-one contests go, would love a singles contest, contest with Nick. Would love a singles contest with John. Um, and sorry to those guys, but I'm more keen to have a one-on-one contest with Blade Shaw. Oh, shit, um, big, that would be big. Big man versus big man. That would be big, man. You know, and, and I'd absolutely that, love that. No pun intended, that would be big <laughs> to see you and Blade go at it. Um, I would just mark out, just, I mean, just seeing Blade wrestle DJ and Blade wrestle Dan Zeppelin was a spin yeah, for me. It's that like, was amazing. <laughs> fucking a year and a half ago, I didn't even think Blade would ever wrestle again. I didn't even think of it. And now I'm getting to see him wrestle my mates from ICWS, which yeah. has just been awesome. <laughs> Um, and there's so much more of that to come, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Okay, the next question from Nick Ariel. Can you please bring back Dark Ice's Fight Night? <laughs> um, that was actually... Can you he, answer that one? He always used to say <laughs> his favourite part of every show he was did. Dark Ice's Fight Night. I, every comment, where's Dark Ice's Fight Night? When's Dark Ice's Fight Night yeah. coming back? You know, NC Viper ruined that for me. So you know what? I want to go one more round with NC Viper. Get your win back, and maybe Dark Ice's <laughs> Fight Night will be back. Yeah, but um, yeah. As far as I go, as you know, Nick, um, you're not listening, but my leg um, is not allowing me to do this at the moment, um, at least for the next six months. So when he does come back, Ariel, I'm sure he's going to call you out, motherfucker. Actually, so you, you know better what? still be wrestling. You better you know still what? be wrestling. Fuck it. When I make my return, and I'm going to say it here first. I will be returning eventually. I will be. Okay. Um, uh, I will start out, and I will call it Dark Ice's Fight Night number six. Yep. There you go, Nick. I'll bring it back when I, re- when I return. Not sure when that is, but when it happens, it will be Dark Ice's Fight Night. You shall be satisfied, And you'll know all about it, mate. <laughs> okay, well, Mitch actually, uh, Mykonos actually chimed in with a question, but we've kind of covered it. He asked your thoughts on going into your return match with myself during the Black Carnival Legion feud of 2013, but we've kind of covered that already, so I hope that was good enough for you, Mitch. (laughs) Um, Yeah, if um, if you don't remember, go back and listen. (laughs) Sorry, mate. (laughs) Uh, So Mitch also asks, um, I mean, you have covered your thoughts on your WCW heavyweight title run, but um, he also adds, do you feel you accomplished what you wanted to out of it? Yes, I do. I... 
um, got put over some of the the most reputable guys in the Fed um, during that title run. So, yeah, I gained everything I wanted. Um, you know, win over Aston, a couple wins over Alex. I main evented Resolution, um, and I got to hold the company's belt. So, all in all, yes, I achieved everything I wanted with that title run. 211 days? 211 days. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty solid run, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Deacon. DK Joker. You. This is a random one. How do you see the GBYWN in five years? Backyard wrestling. This is 2020, he's thinking. <laughs> Backyard wrestling, mate. Do you reckon the GBYWN will still be going in five years when all those blokes in there right now will be of age? Yes, they will. You um, think Brad Hazard will still be wrestling? Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to gauge, yeah, isn't it? That, that, that's not an easy one to answer, you know, um... I really do see um, the GBYWN continuing, but obviously with the the guys in in, the, in America and things like that um, coming of age, they might eventually fold one of another. And to be honest, in five years, um, those guys may not be around. And I do see the GBYWN actually being handed over to Australia. Um, to be honest. Do you reckon we'll be around in five years? I do. There's just, Fuck! Uh, you, you got the younger boys. Um, some of the guys, if if they keep their passion and I'll their fire... I'll be 33 years old. <laughs> that is yeah, old, man. Luke, Luke Monet will be 23 years yeah, old. Yeah, but don't you reckon they'll go to pro wrestling? No, I don't know. I don't know. Five years? I mean, imagine we all do right, wrestling all right. in, in ten, let, Let's be fuck. real here. In five years... Well, you'll only be 28, so that's not too bad. Yeah, I'll be your age. But a 33-year-old backyard wrestler, <laughs> fuck me. How fucked would that be? Who gives a fucking shit? Oh, man. Do it. Anyway, yeah. well, Deacon, well, maybe, maybe it will be, maybe it won't. We didn't give you a clear answer, but yeah, sorry, who man. knows, you man? Who knows, on that one, dude. who knows what their motivations will be in five years? Who knows if Rad Hazard will be wrestling five years? Maybe you will be DK, a dad by DK then. Joker might be the next Rad Hazard. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of those guys will probably be dads and shit, you know, with jobs and... It would be amazing to see that these guys continue on that far, but who knows? I mean, I never thought I'd be a 28-year-old backyard wrestler. I thought I was done five years ago, so... <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, Mykonos, do you feel you are more injury-prone nowadays because of the frequent-ish injuries? Example, your ankle, your knee a while back against Chris, I guess he means the Achilles, uh, or do you feel it's just a bit of bad luck? Just a bit of bad luck, man. Like, I think I think the Achilles was a bit of a freak accident. That was just a bit shit. Yeah, that um, that was a lack of um, not drinking water and not keeping hydrated. More than anything, I I let myself go a little bit before that match. Um, in in leading weeks, and I think the um, moon salt so that was, that was inevitable. The moon salt that um, was just you 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 had too much adrenaline. And yeah, that that was never meant to happen. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't feel injury prone, but uh, my left leg is has received four major injuries over its time. Um, the f- the fracture itself was only hairline, um, so I, I believe um, you know um, I'm, I'm not meant to be injured. I'm not meant to be taken out. So, um, I don't feel accident prone because I, as everyone's seen, I can take a lot of punishment. Um, but I, I just got to take more caution with what I do um, in the wrestling ring, and in that case, I'll be fine. Do you think you've retired the moonsault? Uh, yes. I don't think For, you, maybe you might bring it out on a rare occasion? Uh, probably not, to be honest. Um, I, I've fucked it up once, um, and I'm, I'm not that much of a risk taker to attempt it again. Fair enough. Okay, uh, Mitchell also asks, do you fold or scrunch when you wipe your bum? <laughs> scrunch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ryan Tate. Uh, how do you think you would go if you ever became a babyface character in the WCW? <laughs> you took my question. I was going to ask that at the end of the podcast, you little bitch. <laughs> no, good question, Ryan. What do you reckon, Ice? 
I think I'd fare well because um, against my character now, I'm getting pops from everybody and getting everyone chanting well, for me. So I think Dark it's is fight night. You're getting a few pops here and there because you were challenging heels like a Clint Marshall. Yeah, it's just like I, I, I think it's just it's inevitable. Um, I'm. I feel, think the tide's turned. I feel I was I'm destined to be a face. Yeah, I think when you come um, back, it's, it's and I, I've never played that part before, um, apart from obviously Yolo Nugget, and when Yolo Nugget first came out um, on the scene, um, everybody lapped it up, and I, I had a joyous time being able to high five the guys and be a referee that fucking and a wrestler that. Yep. Just had fun. Yep. And was, was able to get the crowd involved. And now, To those you know, who aren't aware, YOLO Nugget was just a little bit of a, a... You know, if we had some spare time, we'd have YOLO Nugget, this babyface character of Vice's, just do a dark match or whatever, just for a bit of fun, or yeah. he'd come out and referee. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd fare really well as a I face. Think, I think it's about time. Yeah. It was like, it's like Three Dog. He had never been a heel. He was always babyface. He just turned heel. Mm. And then, well, we haven't seen him since, but we'll see what happens <laughs> on Saturday. That's right. Okay, um, Blade Joseph Shaw. Oh, fuck yeah. He asks, who are your top three up-and-comers in the WZWA and ICWS? <coughs> DK Joker, Kyle Inglis, and Steel Kemsley. Excellent. Boom. Boom. Done. Without a doubt. Okay. Um, Blade also asks, what has been the most gratifying feud that you've ever worked and why? I knew he'd throw a big word in there. Gratifying. I've never heard that word. <laughs> it's like dossier. Oh. <laughs> His fucking oh, dossier. What's my favourite dossier? <laughs> <laughs> um, legit, what does that mean? <laughs> Your favourite feud, dark, dark the, the one that you got the most ass. out of, you know, gratifying uh, gratitude, the one that you, you feel passionate about uh, the most. I mean, you've had Chaos, you've had Regan, Rex. you've had a bunch of little things here and there, you know, with the Mykonos and Legion feud. It, or, uh, it'd have to be the NC Viper feud. Oh, well, there you it's go, of course. four years in the making, well, yeah. I mean... Viper were actually going to wrestle at one point on the ICWS base four years ago. Um, uh, oh, aren't you glad that didn't happen? Yeah, I know. That it happened when but it Because he came to a show. Yeah. Um, to watch and all that. And that's really where our friendship really picked up because he, he accepted my invite and that. And, you know, we were friends, got to go on the radio. And then he became keen again, <clears throat> you know, and I just got, I got wound up. Like, I loved it. And for him to actually come again to come and do it was just insane, and that that would have to be my, my favourite feud. Just the the little, it, the little bits on the radio, and it's the, not over yet. I don't it, think it's over it, yet. It might not be over yet. Yeah, it's just um, I, I, it was Dark Ice who took on a pro um, in backyard wrestling. Yeah, um, and all you all you other guys out there can't say that so that's that's something I hold special to me and that, yeah I'd say that that'd be the feud yep cool um Blade also asks this is something that I'd usually ask everyone myself but he throws in what is left for Dark Ice and Yarding a GBYWN title title run gotcha <laughs> well you were um, in line <clears throat> at one stage to actually become the world hardcore champion but Due to situations out of my control, I had to put the belt on Antilochus. Yeah. But he deserved the title he did, anyway. He definitely did. <laughs> um, so you'd like oh, to have well. either an Aussie title or a World or a World title. Hardcore title, either one. Um, yeah, I've got... I've got uh, I believe I'd have a couple more years in me, if it's still around. Um, I still feel... You know, I could accomplish the ICWS title, hopefully. Um, that, that'd be another awesome accomplishment. And um, hopefully, like, match of, the, match of the year at one point. Um, yep. And, yeah, the face run. The face run will be sick. All right. 
Uh, while I'm waiting for a couple more questions, uh, because I've just asked for guys to add a couple more questions. Yep. Um, I'm going to ask you, how did you come up with the name Dark Ice? Uh, the original name was Ice James, um, but before SPWS started in 2009, we'd already been in talks with Dan Zeppelin and um, the ICWS guys, and they were like, oh, we've already got Wicked Nick James, so maybe you should do something else. Um, the name Ice itself was given to me by Chaos, um, because... If you don't, those listening out there who don't know me, I'm practically immune to the cold. It's currently 8.15pm and the temperature is about 7 degrees Celsius. I've got my other boots on and a jumper. And I'm sitting here in uh, pretty much board shorts and a singlet and I am not feeling a bit cold at all. So that's how you got the name? That's how I got the name. Uh, Chaos is pretty much just like, bro, you're like an ice cube. You thrive off the the freezing cold. I was like, oh... Fuck yeah, ice, ice. That's me, and um, yeah, just through the obviously as the heel character, just through in the dark in front of that, because what is dark ice? Like, who, who fucking knows? Yeah, and it, it's just me. That's who I am. <laughs> okay, um, if you could pick, I'm I'm just throwing out more questions. I'm waiting for the guys to maybe chime in with a couple more questions. Yep. Um, who do you think should be WCW heavyweight champion someday? Who hasn't been already? Uh, Kilowatt Chaos. <laughs> um, you know, Chaos is ICWS champion at the moment, and he's he's playing the part beautifully. He's, he's lapping it up. He loves it. Um, and he's, he's legit. Um, so I feel he should get that belt soon. Um, and Daniel Johnston, for everything he's um, committed to, to the ICWS and what he's contributed to the WCWA Um, his string of pro events um, and just everything he's been through I think the WCWA title around his waist um, would be the pinnacle of his backyard career and I reckon he more than anyone would appreciate it the most gotcha and I'd I'd, I'd love to see that because I know I know He'd appreciate it and would lap it up, um, and just just pour out raw emotion. That's not fake. That's not kayfabe emotion. It'd be real emotion. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's one thing I actually forgot to ask about during the talk about WCWA. It's actually about Kilowatt Chaos and yep. how he was actually the first person in Australia's backyard wrestling history to be declared a world champion as the yep. first ever world hardcore champion. Yeah. So how did you feel seeing your old best mate, I mean, not only be ICWS champion, but being the world hardcore champion? What do you mean old best mate? Oh, your old, you know, old mate. Old he's mate. still my, my yeah, best mate. Yeah, that's what I meant. You know, he's <laughs> the old best mate. He's still your best mate. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I wasn't there for that match because I had other commitments. Um, but you, you could just tell that his emotion was real as well when he won that belt yeah um dating back our style was hardcore that's what we were known for um I know you and some of the others were thinking who the belt should go on and a lot of the boys said I saw chaos and I know I put my vote down for chaos as well um to take the belt on so having my brother be declared a world champion Australia's first um yeah, another proud moment in our in our friendship. Yeah, pretty epic. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> um, another question I like to ask is, you know, what would you do if, you know, hypothetically for a fantasy booking sense, if WCWA set aside one date to have an SPWS show <laughs> just for the sake of being like... What would ha- what would it be like if SPWS were to continue? What if what would the, what would happen if there was a ring? You know, if, if if that was a situation, you know, what would you think about that? That that'd be crazy. Um, it, it'd be a hardcore hell type event. Obviously, um, we'd, we'd book stipulations on every match. Um, but me and Chaos, we'd we'd put something on the line. Um, for every single match. Yeah. 
So the guys weren't just going out there to be hardcore. Guys are going out there to win something in every match, whether it be a small trophy or to to mark the day SPWS ruled, um, or you know some some form of a prize anyway. Um, we we'd we'd probably go over the top. We'd think more ECW, and we'd have just we'd we'd think of stipulations um, that have never been done. I do have an idea that I've been throwing around of a match that I want to have. Um, I'm not saying it because I don't want the Americans to do it. I think I already know what it is. Well, don't say it because I, I don't want anyone to pinch no, the idea. It's not going to be pinched. That's um, a and, I, idea. and I will be pushing for that match to occur. Um, but yeah, it 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 will be. It definitely be a different day. There'll be matches no one's seen before, and well, in in backyard wrestling in WA at least. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, now I've actually managed to get Still Kemsley to come in with a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he asks. Um, this is just a random one. Yep. Uh, if you could add another belt to the Fed, what type would it be, and who would deserve it? Well, that's to WCWA, obviously. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, we, we can even include ICWS if you want. Let's just... No, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with WCWA, because it's, at the moment, more prestigious. You got, you've got the WCWA title, the GBYW and Aussie title, the GBYW and World title, and the tag team titles. Um, th- th- that's pretty much... I mean, what you got, want we've like, got a lot <laughs> we've pretty much got the whole set yeah um, but if I was to add an extra one um, basing back on an idea of a match I actually refereed um, I wouldn't mind something like a pure rules belt um, something that is just synonymous with pure wrestling um so there's there's no way you can have a stipulation in a match. It's just you're there for the pure rules match for the pure rules belt. Yeah, I'd probably incorporate that, and yeah, I'd prob- probably put it on the waist of Mike Del Cano. Excellent. I'm still waiting for some questions from the guys, so um, I'm just going to go ahead right now, and we're going to do word association. So I'll just name someone, and you just give me the first thought in your head, whether it's a story about something with them. The first or, word, a story. Or, or you know, like... <laughs> first thought. Whether it's a first thought or just a, a story about the person in, in in general. I'll just throw some names out there. Um, all right. Do you understand the game? Yeah. But yeah. I've, I've covered a lot of that, though, in this You interview. have, you have. <laughs> um, but there's some people you may not have had the chance to really get into detail about. All right. First of all, Antilochus. Good bloke. Um... Good, good vocals on the microphone um, with his band. Yes. Um, you might not know, he's got a few demos out there on YouTube. He's a screamer. Um, so I really dig that. Passionate metalhead. And, yeah, I, I dig his hair, eh? It's different. <laughs> I really dig the hair. And I miss the the first gimmick. The um, Quiet Right Metal Health gimmick. Ah, oh, yeah. Rock, the, the rock and roll dude. The old hardcore superstar. You reckon yeah. he's doing good as a heel right now? I do. Excellent heel. But it, it, I don't know how he does it, but it suits him more than it, he suited Face. So, epic. <laughs> Phaser. Uh, not much to say about Phaser, really, you know. He's also a good dude, but... Um, Commitment wise, needs to commit a little bit better, but you know, injured at the moment, um, which is fucked. Um, yeah, we, funny. You guys did have one match. We uh, did. Funny dude, good to wrestle. Um, would like to go one on one on one with him again in the, down the track. Um, yeah, overall, great character have in the yard. And yeah, he's another one of those guys that just brings a good personality and a fun vibe. Yeah. Johnny V. <laughs> Just incredible on the microphone. Um, nobody cuts a cr- promo like Johnny V. Nobody rips off the superstars of the WWE like Johnny V. Nobody yeah. has the charisma or attitude like Johnny V. He's one of a kind. And he's he's probably the... 
Hey, yeah, above Phaser, above Del Carno, above all them. When Johnny V is at an event, you know you're gonna have a fat time. <laughs> <laughs> you just know, like there's there's. He's the ultimate entertainer. Yeah, I've I've never seen him down ever. Yeah. So yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Hopefully we get to see a Dark Ice Johnny V match one day. Yeah. Dante Daniels. He's different. <laughs> um, he's a gentleman. Um, he's an awesome wrestler. Um, just too bad that he, he dropped out so early. Um, yeah, I, I know him through school and things like that as well. And, um, yeah, come back, Lukey. <laughs> I'd love to see you back, man. Well, I, I saw him at a recent EPW show, and I said, hey, man, December, we always do this Royal Rumble type thing. It's called the Battlefield Brawl. Yep. Do you want to pop in? That'll, <laughs> Come be, in. Uh, that'll be pretty cool. Fuck yeah. Bring it on. That'd be sick. All right, Wicked Nick James. <laughs> My favourite of the Johnstons. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, very relaxed bloke, very chilled, laid back. Um, he, he's another one of those guys who was down in the dumps, um, like chaos, but has brought himself back to life. Um, got himself a, a good job. He's living, living and residing in Bunbury, which is two and a half hours away from where we are, those playing at home. Um, don't see much of him anymore, but every time... He pops down to Perth. Um, he's another one of those guys you just instantly, as soon as you know he's back, you want to go and have a beer with him. Yeah. Because he's just a sick bloke like that. <laughs> Vincent Graves. Mm. Good old Gareth. <clears throat> Me and Gareth at one point had real life heat. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I was dating this girl in 2012. Um, drunken night that he had um, he decided I don't know who he got the number off he got my phone number off someone from ICWS so whoever that was you're a cunt um, this particular night I was on holiday with my girlfriend in Dunsborough which is three and a half hours from Perth um, she was upset so it was the, the worst time to get this phone call um she was upset because she'd previously lost her father to suicide. Um, and on this night, um, as I was comforting her, I got this phone call and I um, answered it. Unfortunately, it was Gareth, but I didn't. I didn't know of Gareth at the time. Okay. Uh, I mean, I knew of him, but I didn't know him personally. And uh, <laughs> he's gone and run his mouth on the phone, prank calling me. You know. Um, fuck your mullet, your mullet's shit, mullet's shit. I'm just like, whatever, man, fuck off. I'm not in the mood, my girlfriend's fucking here, upset, so why don't you fuck off? Should have hung up, but I didn't. And, um, he's gone, oh, he's call, calling her fat and all this stuff, and I was like, can't shut the fuck up. Like, she's just, she's lost her father, she's grieving at the moment, do you want to show a little bit of fucking respect? And he turned around after that and said, did he die because she ate him? And at that moment, I hung up the phone and um, I was apt on killing him. Not killing him, but, you know, finding him and laying hurt. Because wow. that's, well, that's I no what idea I wanted to this. do. Yeah. I, I just wanted to lay hurt on him. But, um... Anyone who knows me, I don't hold grudges and, you know, found a bridge, got over it, and eventually Gareth and I ended up in the same room at DJ's, one of DJ's parties. Um, you know, I said, hey, how you doing, man? Like, didn't talk much, but then DJ's 21st came around, um, that he's like, I'm not having a party, guys, yada, yada, yada. So I organised to have a surprise party. Yeah. At my house, invited yourself and a few others, about 15 people there um, without him knowing. Yep. And Gareth was one of those people I invited. And people were surprised that I invited him, people who knew our story. Yeah. Um, but that night, we got along really well, and 
now he's one of my boys. Because, <laughs> you know, dump the girlfriend, shit happens. He said what was said, but, you know, I, 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 I can't be mad at him anymore for making a drunken prank call when I myself am guilty. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Why not build the bridge, get over it, and blow the bridge up? Fucking, so we can't go back. All right. Uh, Big Ace. Yeah. Very quiet, very, um, keep, keeps himself a lot. Um, I do believe he does have a few social anxiety issues. Um, not a problem. Um, awesome dude. Um, he has approached me at shows, and I've approached him as well. Um, just, you know, just trying to get him to conversate and, yeah, we, we, we've had decent chats in the past and, you know, gained enough respect from Ace for him to actually come up to me and ask if he could use some of my wrestling moves, um, to incorporate in his own arsenal and to which I was just, I was stoked that he come up and asked that. I said, yeah, sure, man. Fuck yeah, go for it. Um, I believe it was the Wasteland. You the wanted, wasteland, yep. Yeah, he wanted to use he that. He wanted to use that. I said, man, it's yours. Go <laughs> for it, dude. Like, he, he's progressed um, socially in the, within the WCWA guys. He comes out and hangs out with us now. And, yeah, love the big fella. Good dude. Yeah, I, I always thought you should be a, a mentor to him as far as uh, wrestling. Um, <laughs> give him a... Well, I've got six months off. Give him some advice when he needs it. Well, I've got six, at least six months off. Well, there you go, and he, he'll he'll thoroughly enjoy that. And now, right now, he's currently <laughs> the tag team champions, much like Alex Stone in but the better. ICWS. Nah, fuck you, Alex. Nah, you're <laughs> right, mate. <laughs> All right, Luke Monet. I'm sure right now he's chomping at the bit to get some uh, kind words from you about himself. You know, you know he'll be listening, and you know <sighs> that he hasn't been talked about at all. The little brown boy. <laughs> so what the fucking thoughts on Luke Monet? Brown. 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 Next. All right. <laughs> nah. Um, <clears throat> he's one of a kind character, much like Johnny V. Um, but again, very different to Johnny V. Um, Monet's got his own pers- personality, unlike anybody else. Um, you know, I've hung out with him before. He's he's always active. He's always cheerful um, and he's, he's just the best person to verse on the Playstation <laughs> <laughs> ok uh, Jack Wallace skinny <laughs> um, Jack's a good dude overall um, he has had his issues but you know everyone's had their issues and we've all gotten over it Jack's gotten over it and um, the it'll I am guilty of bullying him a little bit, which may have caused a few of the issues, and some of the other boys also are guilty, but, you know, we've we've all had a sit back and chat lately, and, you know, we, we're not here to bully anybody, so we're here to, you know, lift him up, and he's, from what he's told me, he's having a ball at the moment, um, and, yeah, he's another one of those dudes where he'd be happy to have a beer, if you wanted to have a beer with him. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'd love love to hang out with him more. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Um, I I know I used to hang out with him quite a bit when I was living up in Carambine. Now it's a bit hard, a bit more hard to come by, but I always enjoyed hanging out with Jack, even if he was just on his bed on his laptop and I was playing (laughs) GTA GTA. 5. (laughs) But those were some fun times, man. Me, you, Dan Zeppelin and Jack playing (laughs) GTA 5. No shit. Dan's playing and we're just... Throwing all these suggestions. <laughs> oi, oi, man, fly over the mountain. Fly yeah, oi, the... bro, see that fence there? Jump in there, you'll be fine. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, I've got four stars. Yeah, you're in the army base, <laughs> faggot. <laughs> oh, God, no. how do I get out? So Just good, uh, fly over that ramp there. Boom, well, That tank. was a fun day, us, us four <laughs> playing. And I think uh, Monet was on playing on mm. there as well DK so Joker. GTA 5 man just so fucking good for WCW <laughs> I've played many times with Low. we've had uh, we've you know we've robbed many stores um, so always good times okay so there's some questions I'll get back to word association bit bit later 
It's uh, just coming around 8.30 now, so we'll probably wind it up in the next, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Yep. Um, but Blade has chimed in with three questions. I wanted three oh. more from the boys. Blade's chimed in and done it for me. So um, first question, I'm going to skip the first one because I think that should be the last one. All right. Um, question is, who do you think are the current top babyface and heel workers in WCWA and ICWS? So that's probably a two-part question. Yep, so we'll go with... WZWA, um, Top Hill characters, Antilochus is definitely uh, one of the heel workers, best heel workers. Um, you know, I, I'd like to think myself as one of the better heel workers as well. Um, but generally speaking, anyone in the EA is a great heel worker as well. Um, yourself, Aston, you're an incredible heel like you're you're in a new another element compared to anybody else um you just you just played it better than anybody um yeah they'd they'd probably be my top heels blade yourself as well um you're able to work on the microphone against everybody in the crowd and that's a feature a lot of people need to work on yeah. but you have that so um the yourself you know, you dirty tactics as well, Blade. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd be up there as well. Um, as far as faces go, Chaos is an awesome face. Yep. Um, Rex is playing the face character well. Um, and when Alex obviously is around, he's definitely the best. He's just such a great baby face. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely the best. Um, I mean, he was good heel, but as a baby face, just... You love everyone loves Alex. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> Steel Kemsley. Um, I don't know what he is to be honest. <laughs> he's a baby I, face. I, now. We'll call him baby face just because like his attitude towards his matches and everything like that is just it's great to see, and he's always pumped it, halfway through a match. You know, you get the battle cry, and you know, Steel Kemsley's on a roll, and he just fucking. Lapping it up because this young fella's fucking going out there and just being a boss. Yeah. So still Kemsey in, in that one as well. Excellent. Um. So I mean, ICWS is there's a transition there. Um. I, I mean, uh, it, it's almost like a reverse. I mean, Chaos is a good heel oh, in ICWS. He's a good heel. I mean, Babyface in WCWA. Yeah. Well, that's it. Chaos just knows how to work a character. Doesn't matter if it's heel or face or neutral. Chaos just. It's just excellent at work in a character. So, Chaos would be a pick for ICWS Heal. Um, Ryan Tate as well. Um, the, that, that's just what's coming to my mind at the moment. Okay. But, um, All right. As faces go, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's, it's, it's hard to pick people at the moment in current ICWS. Yeah, um, that's fine. Not everyone's characters are fully established yet. So, yeah, fair enough. Um, the heels are a lot easier to pick because, you know, straight out they've come out and they've gone... Rah, 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 yeah, yeah. Solidified themselves instantly where it's not as easy to solidify a face character. Yeah. Okay, um, another question. Um, I'm going to grab a beer as you answer this. Name one person you would bring back out of retirement if you could to WZWA and Diffuser. Why. No comment needed. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get up now. Uh, you don't even need to say why. We know why. Um, okay. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the future of WZWA and ICWS? So start off with WZWA, then get to ICWS. Now I can get a beer. <laughs> <coughs> um, a stop? Uh, I better hold off. Right. Um, WZWA... Um, the future is still bright, but, you know, it, it's always going to be in doubt now that the, the bloke who's actually running it, um, is turning 18, so he's going to be want to go out more Saturday nights than anything, so, you know, anything's possible, but a, as of, you know, the next year at least, um, the future for WCWA is just amazing. I just think that most, from, from next year... Jack will just be hung over well, that, a lot that, more because he'll be going out Friday yeah. nights, you know. So yeah. he'll just have to deal with being hung over, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, hopefully still agrees to do shows. Yeah. Um, it's once every two months now, so hopefully yeah. it'll still be cool by then. Yeah, I'll pick a date and don't go out that Friday night. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and your thoughts on the future of ICWS? I mean, obviously, a bit of a shaky start, but they've been good shows. Yeah, I mean, well, it's a shaky start, but, you know, DJ's devoted to having these shows, and his parents are keen as well on keeping it in the front yard. Um, so as, as long as DJ's keen to keep it going and his parents are happy to have it there, um, ICWS, the Federation, um, is looking great. There's always going to be a show. Um, like last show, I, I spent quite a f- bit of money to actually repair the base um, so that we could keep it going, and that yes. was that was appreciated by all. So there is there is everything to have ICWS there, and at the moment nothing's holding it back except the commitment of the boys. Yes. Um, but you know what? As long as we've still got the regulars that we currently have um, committing to show after show after show, um, there's definitely going to be something exciting in the future for ICWS. Agreed. All right, well, um, I'll finish off on a couple of questions. Just in, I'll just double-check. Oh, wait, maybe FaZe has actually chimed in with a question here. That will be a first. I think he has. Oh, God. What is ice afraid of? Will ice drink ice in water? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're a fucking knobby, bro. <laughs> Ice is afraid of spiders. Doesn't matter how big or how small. If there's a spider in sight, if it's small enough to kill, I'll kill it. Uh, if it's a redback or a golden orb or a huntsman or a fucking... Uh, even a black widow. You or know, a man. Or a garden spider. Or a man. A, ma- a spider man. <laughs> <laughs> Cop that. Oh, God. You better fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ice is afraid of spiders, man, and I know I'm not afraid to fucking. I will drink water with ice with water. Okay. Well, that's um, good to know. I, uh, ice, ice that you're asking is a person. Yeah. Not, not a fucking. Not an actual cube of cold, I'm not very, f- very cold water. Yeah, no. Dickhead. <laughs> Okay, um, well, we'll go back now to word association before we wrap all of this up. Uh, the next person, I'm going to throw the name out there, DK Joker. Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> That's, everyone seems to associate Deacon with Ellen, but like... He does look like a little dyke. <laughs> he does, but, you know... <laughs> He's still... He's hey, so still, did Ryan when I first saw him. Yeah, like, but Deacon's still a young fella, so... You know, I haven't... Maybe he should grow a beard out or something. He needs to get a great, like, a nice fucking badass goatee. Yeah. But, um, as far as looks... He's, he's a handsome young bloke. Um... He's gonna get a lot of pussy. He will definitely get a lot of pussy. Hopefully... Asian hooker! Um... Yeah, he... He's, he's very bright as far as I know. He maybe he doesn't he doesn't talk a lot, but it seems every time he opens his mouth, it's actually something fucking pretty smart um, and intelligent. So he's he's definitely got a future ahead of him. Um, and yeah, he's, he's he's able to throw himself around in the ring. Um, there are a few improvements he does need, um, uh, like like flow of a match itself. Yeah. Um, be better if they can go from move to move rather yeah. than um, it sort of it sort of it's a bit of a stop stop and start yeah sort of like a big man character um, without him even realizing it but um, yeah bright young bloke and incredible future ahead of him in backyard wrestling and life itself hey you look back a year ago and you see the way he did his strikes back then to now yes he really lays it in there now oh, and he's really yeah. you know, it's just amazing to see the improvement in these younger dudes in WCWA yeah. and um like, like I was asked before um one of the questions the three guys who I think will are improved the three improved guys mm-hmm. um I named him for reasons like that yeah and he's he's in the middle of the biggest push that he's got so far as so oh, as far as being yeah. a singles wrestler, he's a, <laughs> he's backyard champion, and um, you know, his yeah, actually, character is just amazing. Actually, know? thinking about that now, like his matches, 
with his current style was that he's probably going to play in his favour yeah. as a heel character. So maybe maybe it's not so much a bad thing. Yeah. I reckon, you know, him portraying this heel right now, he's a badass when he needs to be, but he can also play the chicken shit running away from Kai Fusion. Yeah. Um, much and, like you know, Dark Ice's general manager character when he had the broken leg. Yeah. The confrontation with Aston Crude. Yeah. Um, where he went to chokes, I went to choke slam you. Yes, but uh, you you went to struggle town with me and you shoved me off. You went to super kick, but I just fucking. And then you fucking just powder the outside. <laughs> awesome ho- stuff. Ho- hobbled backstage. Uh, so here's a guy with I have not even said his name through the three parts we've done this interview. Brandon Cage. Uh, <laughs> uh, next. Come on. Um, I've hung out with Brandon on the outside. Brandon's a good dude to hang out with. Um, but uh, I feel he was never committed to wrestling. Um, you know, that, that was a bit of a shame. He, he had potential, you know. Um, but, yeah, there's not much to say about him because there just wasn't enough of him around to have a, a real opinion. But, you know... As far as uh, a person rather than a character goes, he's a good bloke to hang out with. He's fun to hang out with. and well, You probably got to know him better than any, any of us did. Yeah, m- most likely myself, Dan Zeppelin, Rihanna, we always hung out with Brandon. and um, I just think he just didn't let his walls down with us. Yeah. And he never really tried to be one of the boys. Yeah, the... He socially secluded himself on purpose, I think. And I don't understand why, um, because it seemed like he was actually trying to hang out with us to begin with. Yeah. Going to the Bayswater Hotel for a beer. Yeah. And then suddenly and he just... There, there, like, there were a few um, points where he'd asked me to hang out and help him with this and that, and I'd be keen, and then he'd cancel, and I, I just wasn't aware of anything that was going on, and, you know, he just dropped off the map, like... It's a I it's a it's a real happens. mystery to me still. I don't know what where his motivations lie, but uh, in conclusion, you know, he's got it's his, a shame. His, his, yeah, it's a it's a real shame. But you know, he's got his hairdressing career now, um, which you can you can see all over Facebook. Um, so he seems he's to be just giving excelling. everyone his haircut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you know what? It's working. Yeah, <laughs> and he's loving it. So you know, he's a happy bloke. So that that makes me happy knowing that he's happy where he's at at the moment. Okay. The Backyard Gangster Acid. <laughs> you guys had one lone match, but there was something that happened once before, which maybe you can go into detail. The, uh, I booked a match between you two. <laughs> yeah, well... He had just returned. He just returned, and I was not impressed um, at all with him. Uh, I thought he wasn't going to give anything to us or for us. I, I ranked him below anybody in the federation um uh, i didn't really get to know him i didn't want to get to know him um but you know what as time went by and he hung out with myself and rex and chaos and that i got to know him better as a person and i think that bond that he started creating with everybody hanging out with everyone actually made him more comfortable in the ring and just excelled his performances in the ring because he was so comfortable with everybody yeah um you you booked a match with me and Acid and I refused because I didn't I, I didn't feel like going out and having a shit match. I'm gonna say I didn't want to go out and have a shit match against Acid. Um, but yeah, like I said, as we became mates a year on, his performances were incredible, and then I requested a match against Acid. Yeah. Um, and we got got the chance to throw in a a fun event um, with no st- no storylines really. Yeah. Um, Lana's ass. It was supposed to be just two tapings of Backyard TV, but we said, hey, we've got enough people here. Let's yeah, just... let's just do a show. Yeah. So we did that show, and I got the verse <laughs> Acid, and that was a great what a match. Yeah. <laughs> and you were going over, but Acid was in the middle of his push, so yep. you made sure to make him look good. Yes, I, I let him hit his blue thunder bomb, and um, pretty much just made him look strong. Nobody, just... It looked like nobody had ever manhandled Dark Ice like that. Yeah, no. Nah. And, um, yeah, quite proud that he was able to do that and, you know, leading up to his title run. Um, it's great. Okay, well, there's another one that I still haven't mentioned, which is going to get the mention because I know that this will be a bit of a story. Bundy 
Mac X BMX. Here we go. Yeah. Everyone strap yourselves in. We're going for a long ride. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> um, it was no secret. We were pretty good mates. Um, he was always coming to shows. He's like Cameron was always there. Yeah, Cameron was always there. Um, but BMX, he, he, he came to me and he goes, dude, I'd like to do the wrestling if that's cool. I said, Matt, it's not up to me, so talk to yourself or some others and... Everyone got in talks, and he was able to actually step in the ring against Yolo Nugget for a match that was not taped, which yeah. I I still really wish it was, because it was a, it was a hell of a performance just seeing what he could do. Yeah, it was cool. Um, like he was he was fearless in the ring, he was fearless outside the ring, um, but he had no life direction. Um, he, he'd always um, mooch off me. Um, Every time we hung out, you know, um, I'd go somewhere and I'd buy something and he'd want something too. And I'd be like, just being the general guy I am, you know, sure, get you that as well. Um, We went on car cruises together and shit like that. But, you know, in the end, um, I went over one day to his house to fix his car. Um, And there was a bolt on the cooling system. That was just overly rusted. So one turn of that bolt snapped it. So it doesn't matter whose hands were going to touch it. It was always going to break. And he accused me of wrecking his car. Um, Just acted as if we were never friends. Just threw me out the fucking door. So you know what? If if that's what it was like. If you're going to be a fake cunt. You can get fucked if I if, if you've got a problem with me, say it to my face. Why are you saying it over Facebook? You know, talk to me in person about it. Like, I offered to pay for the repair, and he still called me a cunt and a dog and a low life. Um, granted, I fucked his ex, but <laughs> <laughs> they weren't dating anymore. They were they were long done. So. Yeah. Well, it's fair in love and war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, he, he had potential. He did have potential, but he just, his attitude was just, I didn't understand him. All <laughs> yeah, of a sudden he, he, want, he, he had one match and he wanted to have a retirement story. He had a dark match and then wanted to retire. It's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Unbelievable. Just, just a weird dude, a real weird dude. We've had them come and go with the years and... Speaking of someone who came and went, Marcus Cones Jones. Oh, yeah. What did you think? Like, short run. I don't know, man. Like, I didn't know the bloke that well. The only time I ever saw him, like, he was always happy to see me because he'd seen me wrestle. Um, but I just generally didn't know anything about the dude. He was everyone else's mate but mine. Um, not on purpose, just we'd never encountered each other anywhere else except WZWA. And, you know, he had a bit of a positive attitude, but then he was he was a bit roughneck at times and got got on people's nerves and, you know... Um, uh, yeah, overall, if if he wanted to catch up for a beer, I'd, I'd accept the offer. Love to catch up with the dude, but um, I, I never saw any direction with him in the WZW, WZWA. And, um, it was always relying on whatever Lowe was doing. Yeah, and then Lowe dropped out and he followed. So yeah. He, he needed his own direction. He had, to, he had to man up for himself and... If he really wanted to do it, he would have stuck around. But unfortunately, I guess guess that's not the case. Yep. Well, we'll get a couple more out. Uh, Kai Fusion. Warn bro, dart. Yeah, dart. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, uh, the most chilled back Warn bro person out there. Um, solid wrestler, obviously. Fucking very athletic. Um... Great person to hang around, fun to be around. Um, outside the WCWA, um, he's an awesome dude, great character, and he always, you know, I've been to a few places where he's been out with us, and um, every now and then he'd fucking just just lift lift everyone's spirits because he's just been a general funny cunt. <laughs> All right, uh, go two more. Aston right. Crude. Aston Crude. What a fuck with. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yourself 
you know, we spend a lot of time outside of wrestling. Um, obviously, common interest in a lot of things. Um, motorsports, ice hockey, wrestling, and you know, general life. Just activities here and there that we both associate with. Yep. Um, it has created a pretty pretty good bond between us. Yeah. Um, and even your girlfriend. A good solid bond as well. Good friendship. Um, Cooked us both dinner tonight. Yeah, fucking, fucking sick. sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken pie is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, um, that like obviously outside wrestling, you're just the fucking absolute top bloke. And so I'm always nagging to hang out with you because you're actually one of the real people <laughs> that I like hanging out with. You're actually you're just real. Yeah, you, you too, know. man. Um, but yeah, character wise, it's just phenomenal. Obviously, always. Tried my best to get to your AAW shows and your Schwa shows. Yes, and, you're always there. Even when uh, I was doing my rock and roll night, you're always there. Yeah, always at um, your rock and roll nights in the city or wherever they ended up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. As far as your character goes, you just you above everybody, and yeah, there's there's no no one can carry on your legacy. You are Aston Crude. <laughs> Um, you are that guy and there's no one that can take your place well thank you that's very nice that's legit <laughs> okay and lastly Dark Ice <laughs> what do you think about yourself <sighs> what do you think about the legacy of Dark Ice I don't know I don't know you're proud of yourself you're uh, I'm yourself proud of everything I've done in the wrestling um, almost accomplished everything I've wanted to um a Hall of Famer out of nowhere. Um, I've got all these honours and things like that, you know. Um, four footy premierships with a bunch of awesome blokes. Baseball premiership with my dad as the coach. Um, a huge family who most of the time are fucking supportive and um, just absolute characters. There's no one like my family out there. I know every, a lot of people say that, like, my family's the greatest and things like that, but, but my family, uh, I think we're supposed to be born comedians because every time I'm with them, it's always a laugh and we've got our own version of the happy birthday song. Okay. Um, anytime someone's birthday, um, every single person out there sings out of tune on purpose yep. and it's just a clusterfuck of a song yep. um, but that that's my family um, so I, I'm proud to be a Malcolm I'm happy to be who I am um, as far as current life goes you know getting over the psoriasis my group of mates and like jobs things like that everything's smooth and well and um, yeah, I could see myself with my own little family down the track soon, I reckon. Yeah, cool. So, um, just overall, happy with everything I've done and accomplished in my life and um, looking forward to many years ahead. Do you reckon you'll ever do pro wrestling? I don't know, man. I can't answer that. Um, I'll probably work towards it. Uh, I would like to wrestle um, on an APW show one day. Um, get booked permanently if I could um, but you know as I'm as I'm I'm only 23 but I will be getting older um, depends how my situations go if I I, I know I'm going to need to size up a bit if I did want to get into something like APW um, so it's just a matter of putting my brain on track if I really want to commit I'm going to have to put my brain forward and do it yeah um but, you know, probably easy to get on a schwa show, but I'd rather jump straight into the top top dogs. Um, so, you know, two years down the track, however my life's sitting at the moment, I'll probably make that real decision. All right, well, that was that. The career of Dark Ice, we've covered almost pretty much everything. Yeah. I mean, we could probably continue name association if you want, but I think we've gone long enough now. This is... This part has gone an hour and a half now. We have four hours of so plenty of <laughs> plenty of stuff out there for you guys to listen to. If you've made it this far, good on you. Um, Thank you. Quite a lot of things have been covered: psoriasis, um, the loss of a best friend's uh, m- mother, um, 
his Hall of Fame inductions, his accolades as champion, um, your feuds, everything that's gone down in the career of Dark Ice. So thank you everyone for listening. Any last words, Ice, to anyone who's listened to this? Uh, Anyone who's listened to this and is in doubt, I will be back uh, to Backyard Wrestling. And yeah, thanks, thanks, Hits, for listening. And you know, hit me up on Facebook if you want to have a yarn. Luke Malcolm, M A L C O L M. Yep. With uh, that mullet in the middle. Yep. Luke, that mullet Malcolm. Luke, that mullet Malcolm. Um, or just speak to Aston Crude on Facebook if you want to know who I am. Just, um, yeah. Thanks, Hits, for listening in. Appreciate if you got this far. Um,. Yeah, peace. <laughs> and if any of you didn't get anything out of this, the only things that there really are that you can get out of it is that Dark Ice will be back in Backyard Wrestling in 2016. And the challenges have been laid. NC Viper, Diffuser, either of you want to get in the ring with Dark Ice, let's try and make it happen. Thank you everyone for listening to the GBYW in Australia podcast. I am your host, Aston Crude, alongside Dark Ice here. Yeah. Thank you again, and we will see you next time with part two of my interview with Big Red Ryan Tate. Thank you, guys. See ya. Yeah.